It's the kind of thing everyone has dreamed about. You're digging around in Grandma's attic when you stumble across an old knickknack that's actually worth a pant load of greenbacks. Sometimes, though, the fantasy becomes reality. Here are some antiques roadshow finds that made owners crazy rich. Collected by the owner's father in the 1930s and 40s on two visits to China, this collection included four pieces from the 18th century. The owner was hoping for a nice valuation, but even she was stunned when appraiser Jim Callahan delivered the verdict. For a total amount of between 710000 to 1070000 Damn. Many people keep artwork on their walls behind their doors. It's a pretty normal thing. It might be a Reservoir Dogs poster if you're a single man, or a framed picture that says life is just a chair of bullies if you're a grandma. What most people don't hang behind their doors are million-dollar lost paintings by the great Latin American artists of the 20th century. But this owner from a 2012 visit to Corpus Christi isn't most people. His great-grandparents bought a painting in Mexico in 1930 and subsequently hung it in their house behind a door. What they didn't know was that this was actually an early painting by a teenage Diego Rivera from 1904, who would go on to be one of the most prominent painters in Mexican history, famous both for his murals and also for being married to Frida Kahlo. Needless to say, he was pretty surprised to learn just what he had. I would be putting a retail estimate on the piece of between $800,000 and a million dollars. Seriously? Every baseball card collector dreams of finding the ultimate score, but nobody will ever be able to beat the lucky owner who brought her family's collection to the show in 2014. In 1871, her great-great-grandmother had hosted Boston's first professional baseball team, the Red Stockings. As a gift, they gave her a complete set of team baseball cards, along with a signed letter from the team. Appraiser Layla Dunbar was so blown away by the collection, which was unlike any previously known to exist, that she got choked up delivering the verdict. I would insure it for at least one million dollars. It is the greatest archive I have ever had at the Roadshow. Perhaps needless to say, military artifacts and memorabilia are a very popular category of antique on both the U.S. and U.K. versions of Antiques Roadshow. As a result, it should come as no surprise that the highest ticket item in the history of the U.K. show, ringing in at one million pounds or just over 1.3 million dollars, is a military item. Well, sort of. Actually, it's a delicate flower created by legendary jeweler Peter Carl Fabergé. The flower was gifted to an army regiment in the early 1900s by Georgina, Countless of Dudley, in honor of their service in South Africa. In my opinion, that this is worth a million pounds. Really? Wow. Goodness <laughs> gracious. Wow. Let's be super clear about one thing just right up top. Absolutely do not, under any circumstances, buy anything made from rhino horns ever for any reason. Rhinos are endangered, and the chief reason is people hunting them for their horns. Rhino horns. Just say no. That said, one man in Tulsa discovered his collection of rhino horn cups was worth a fortune back in 2011. He began collecting them in the 70s, spending a total of about $5,000 for several Chinese libation cups from the 17th and 18th centuries. So he was pretty shocked to hear just how much they had increased in value. A conservative number would be between a million and a million five hundred thousand dollars for this group. Serious? PBS later gave an update indicating that after the appraisal, Chinese officials began cracking down on the trade of anything made with rhino horns. As a result, the market tanked even for ancient art objects like these. When sent to auction, three of the five cups failed to sell at all, while the other two fetched the low end of their estimated range, which was still good for $300,000. China has since reversed their position though, so who knows what value fluctuations are yet to come. Though most people these days just use their phone to tell time, there's still a big demand for well-made watches. In 2004, a man visited the roadshow with a Patek Philippe watch handed down to him from his great-grandfather that had cool features like a calendar that accounted for leap years and a moon phase indicator. Appraiser Paul Hartquist basically lost his mind. But in the way you'd expect a person to lose his mind on PBS, very calmly intoning that it was the finest watch he had ever seen. This watch at auction, I suspect, would bring close to a quarter million dollars. No. However, it was later discovered that this watch was literally one of a kind, as the special features were made just for this singular example. That drove the price up dramatically, and in 2016 it brought $1.5 million at auction. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more grunge videos about your favorite stuff are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.